do you know what inflation really is? Then hold some physical gold and silver. Hello everybody, welcome to my video. In March 2022, annual US consumer goods price inflation was 8.5%, the highest level since 1981. While Main Street considers it, and rightfully so, terrifying data, Wall Street actually sees it as good news of sorts. Financial markets are expecting US CPI inflation to have peaked, and hopefully inflation rates, inflation rates will come down in the coming months. However, is this a likely scenario? To answer this question, let us take a brief look at what inflation really means. Goods price inflation, the continued increase in the prices of goods and services across the board, is not a natural disaster. The truth is that it is a man-made tragedy. It is caused by government-sponsored central banks increasing the quantity of money. Admittedly, there are developments that affect goods prices, such as strong increases in energy prices, a VAT hike or an increase in wages. However, they do not cause inflation as defined above. This is easy to explain. Assume the quantity of money in the economy is constant. Suddenly fuel prices double. To consume the same amount of fuel as before, people have to reduce their demand for other things – clothing, travel, cars, etc. The economy ends up with increased fuel prices and reduced prices of other goods. The demand for those goods and therefore their prices have declined. There is no inflation in the sense of a permanent increase in goods prices across the board over time in this example. In fact, it makes sense to distinguish between goods price inflation and monetary inflation, the latter denoting the increase in the quantity of money. In this sense, goods price inflation is the symptom of a cause, namely monetary inflation. And since state-sponsored central banks hold the money production monopoly, they are responsible for inflation. From this perspective, it does not come as a surprise that goods price inflation has skyrocketed. The US Federal Reserve has increased the money stock M2 by 42% since the end of 2019, while the European Central Bank has expanded the money stock M3 by 21%. As a result, an enormous monetary overhang was built up. It allows the negative price shocks stemming from lockdowns, green policies and the war in Ukraine to push up virtually all goods and services prices, leading to increased goods price inflation. At the same time, central banks are reluctant to end their ultra-low interest rates policies and rein in money supply growth to curb inflation. On the one hand, this is in a way understandable. After many years of excessively easy monetary policy, economies have become heavily reliant on the continued monetary stimulus. The heavily leveraged system could all too easily be thrown over the cliff if borrowing and capital costs rise too much. On the other hand, monetary policymakers might hope that consumer goods price inflation will ease off, so they do not have to hike interest rates too much. This is, of course, a rather dangerous bet. The decision not to raise interest rates or delay rate hikes means that goods price inflation will be higher than it would otherwise be. And if future inflation pressure turns out to be higher than expected today, things could get really messy. Experience in many countries has shown that persistently high inflation risks eroding people's confidence in official currencies. Once that happens, a crisis of confidence requires a very restrictive monetary policy, sending the economy into a deep recession and disappointing people's elevated inflation expectations. However, given the heavily indebted Western world, it is particularly difficult to believe that such a scenario would not be economically and politically catastrophic. Even so, central banks continue to play with fire. They installed an overly accommodative monetary policy in the first place and they did not have the courage to end it when it still was possible. 
Even worse, policymakers now see elevated inflation as an acceptable societal price and the policy of increased inflation as a policy of the least evil. All of this is, of course, bad news for the general public who will suffer most from the debasement of the currencies. As outlined in previous reports, inflation is quite a challenge for the investor and the saver. There tends to be no easy way to avoid the costs and losses caused by inflation. However, holding physical gold and silver ranks among the viable options. Central banks' inflationary policies cannot reduce the exchange value of these precious metals. And other than bank deposits and short-term debt instruments, physical gold and silver do not carry any counterparty or default risk. What is more, holding physical gold and silver would also hedge against the extreme downside scenario namely the unbacked paper money system spiraling completely out of control. Admittedly, this is a tail risk scenario at this point. Unfortunately, however, it becomes increasingly likely with central banks allowing price inflation to edge ever higher, prioritizing propping up the system over keeping inflation low. Thank you very much for your attention. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, subscribe and ring the bell.